Hey, beautiful people. I uh, had to pick up a new preamp because uh, this thing, the Ultra Gain Pro, the Behringer, the Standard, the two channel. You've probably had it in your rack at some point. Don't lie. Uh, oh, it does have a, let's get a little tube window with LEDs behind it to make you think it does something. It's technically in the chain. If you remove the tube, it doesn't work. But it kind of fuzzed out, died on us at the end of the show. Saturday came back to life Sunday afternoon, but that, that's not the type of reliability I can trust. So I had to pick up something new. What I decided on was this uh, from Art, a TPS2. They think they were made in 2003. They're not new hotness, but you can still buy new old stock. They might still make them. Pretty simple. I mean, it does have impedance control, just standard gain output. It's got this V3 thing on it, which is going to drive some signal through the tube and uh, gain button input, you know, combo jack up front, XLR and back output XLR and quarter inch unbalanced because weird reasons. I don't understand why they decided to go with unbalanced on the quarter inch, but that's the thing. That's reality. And I'm down with it. Anyway, everyone online said, you've got to replace the tube because it's some cheap tube. I mean, it's a 12AX7. And it's like, okay, you know what? We're going to take the Pepsi challenge. So here we go. This is a tongue sole. Pretty cheap. It was less than, less than like 12 or $14 from Amazon of all places. Let's swap it out and see if it makes any difference? Question mark. I mean, it might. Currently, right now, we have it, we're going through the stock tube and this thing used, I picked it up at Guitar Center for like 60 bucks because I'm not paying $200 for it. That's what I have. I have a $60 preamp, which is enough to drive this uh, Golden Age Project D2 uh, dynamic mic, which is a low output mic and you need to throw a metric S ton of gain into it just to get it up to level. It's running through it right now. It's plugged in. Uh, we're putting some signal through the tube if the gauge is to be believed, the VU meter, and it's set on warm voice. So let's swap this critter out, plug it back in, and see if we can tell any difference, which even if we can, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's probably no way to tell, right? Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's get this apart. There are two screws um, on the left two screws on the right and the retaining screw in the front and the back, the top dead center. Once you have those off, the lid comes right off by pulling up. This is not going to be an issue. And we should now have access to our tube, the singular tube and our quote unquote tube amp. It should be easy enough to swap this out ish but we are going to swap it out with the tongue sole and find out if it makes it sound different i don't even think i'm going for better but what i'm going to try to do is kind of do it the right way and not get fingerprints all over the tube but it was kind of stuck in there and if you look it's on a board on the pcb that is extremely wobbly so I've resorted to using a jeweler's screw and the tried and true pry from left, pry from right, and it'll eventually come out. I do not recommend this method, but I'm going to tell you, it does work. It is effective. And again, I'm still having to take a lot of care here. You can see how much the board is wobbling. It'd be real easy to snap that off. So you want to be really careful because it does not want to come out. But this is, tubes are going to tube, right? Now, the first time I've ran into that, I just wish the mounting mechanism was a bit sturdier. But as expected, Chinese tube, 12AX, and uh, not necessarily anything wrong with it, but we know it's been in the system since 2003. So let's get the tongue sole in. Should be completely straightforward. Um, pin pattern, it's going to match up. Line it up, push it in. Not really a wrong way to put these in. I mean, you could force it in the wrong way, but it would be very clear that you did that. 
And since getting that tube out was such a pain, I was definitely a bit worried about getting it back in. And this turned out not to be the easiest thing in the world. I gave up not touching the tube and just resorted to a firm grip with a wobble. And it eventually just popped in. This was good. Cleaned off the fingerprints and should be good to go. Just kind of checking that plate. Really not happy with how that wobbles back and forth. But that's pretty much the job. It, theoretically, we should be able to apply power and try it out. Here's the old tube. So from here, we just need to put the lid back on, put the screws, two screws on the left, two screws on the right, and the front and back screws. Take a little care getting those in because it's a uh, flexed fit. You kind of have to come in sideways, especially on that screw on the back. But let's go find out if it made it sound any better. Okay, we're back up here. We did the thing. It worked. Uh, getting that tube out was a monster. But um, I think, as everyone might have suspected, it was a Chinese tube. Which I'm not saying good or bad, but, you know, no workings on it whatsoever other than just made in China. That was the thing. Mm, and now we're now running with the tongue salt. Put everything back together. The... Main thing I noticed was the LED on the VU meter on the right side was out. So using the scientific method of taking the cover back off and put tapping on things and putting the cover back on, it magically came back to life. So does it sound any different? This is a good question. I don't know. Um, one thing I will do... 100%, you know, same settings, um, gain, gain's about 95% because of this microphone, uh, output is cut up just a little bit, and the V3, the valve tuning thing that they have, is set on warm, like it was previously, because that is, at least according to the meter, driving signal through the tube, and that's going into the FCA 1616. Um, over line in, and we're just recording it like that. More gain, definitely. I want to say we got like plus eight, plus nine gain by the tube switch. And I don't know, I, I don't like using words like warmer or anything. It definitely could be that it's just louder. Don't want to say bassier because. One thing I like about this microphone is it's got a bunch of bass roll-off switches, so I can talk into it without you just sounding like that. So, for better or worse, this looks like a new old stock unit. Is it worth changing it out? Uh, I don't know. It sounds different. I don't know if it's necessarily bad or good, but, you know, that was a tube from 2003 sitting in it. Not saying they go bad or anything, but learning experience. But maybe you have one that you want to swap out tubes and play with, or tube, um, with its wonderful restricted plate design. And again, save those comments. I understand the difference between a tube amp and a tube amp. I don't know if it's worth doing, but it has been done. All right, that was it. Have fun. Bye-bye.